I'm Mark. I'm Justin. And we're My Loving Tiger. We started this band 17 years ago. Now we're back. To revisit, re-record, and re-release every song we've ever written. So come and join us. Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we take a look at recording drums for Cupboard Wars. This time around, we recorded drums a little bit differently. These songs, I played a lot less on drums and had them memorized way less. In the first set of songs, I was able to like one shot the songs, just playing beginning to end because I knew them so well. We played them so much for so long. These songs got played a lot less. We had an actual drummer at this point. So I just would teach them the drum parts and then I was out. Uh, <laughs> we will start the song, I'll make it as far as I can. When things start to fall apart, we'll stop, assess, go back, and then punch ourselves in over the top and go as far as we can and just continue that process till we get the whole song and then we're able to piece it all together in one good take, which is not how we recorded the first EP. Also, I think when these songs were written, they were written in the studio without ever playing them out live before we recorded them. Like, whereas the first set of songs, we were trying to be a band and we were trying to play shows and these were just like nope we're just doing the studio thing so like we would figure out what the drum part should be and just record it yeah we did it was definitely much more of a studio situation sit there figure out a cool drum part play the drum part record it sounds good never play it again moving on yeah so i want to talk a bit about the form of this song because it's kind of an interesting form the beginning is in five four there's mm -hmm. that cool lick it starts off in five four and right. then it goes um, when we get to the um, verse, yeah, um, the verse is in swing time. This is our first like swing song that has a swing to it. To break the part A and part B of the verse up, there's like a little Beatles-esque Ringo Starr fill. And then it ramps up and goes into the chorus, which is just the verse loud. And then we get to the part that confuses everyone. When, including you during the Including video. me, where it does a phrase of 5-4. A phrase of reggae steppers type beat and then back into the swing time and it does all of that in the span of about 10 seconds right and she goes boom 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 part 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 and it's very confusing when we wrote that we thought we were really clever because it was yeah. like feeling disjointed like yeah. oh wouldn't it be cool if you just ran this part into that part into yeah. that part like you edited it in really hard but you actually played it yeah and yeah. the five because the five four is in straight it's played right. straight so you go from this like swinging chorus into this straight 5-4 part, into this super swinging like reggae part, right. into back into the more straight swing. And then you have to like get these parts to play into each other, right. which is a bit of a task. Also just remembering the pattern of that, that reggae part was a chore. They'll get to see you yes, struggle with struggle that. With that. <laughs> the idea was that it would feel like someone had snipped in the edits, but you actually yes. had to play it through. Yeah, it was right. just supposed to feel like you took a computer and you were like, put this here, put this here, put this here. But no, it was, I played it, I played it, I played it. I mean, in the original recording, I played it all the way through. Right. There was no editing it together or anything. And then when you would get drummers in to try out, that section was always just a train wreck. There was no, no one was going to come in and just like, I nailed it. That never happened. Yeah, it was almost a joke. Was yeah, like, I mean, it, I mean, like once we got drummers in the band and we they learned the part and the whatever, they were fine with it. It's not like it's a hard, like impossible part or anything like that. But they would come in and like hit that part and just, oh, okay, good. I mean, we made it that far. Good job. Yeah, you can't just stumble through it. No. Speaking of stumble through it, though, at the end of the song, the outro, I thought it was in 4-4, four, four, but it was actually in 5-4, and so I was moving the scratch guitar around to be on the bars, and it was making yeah. it worse and worse and worse, because I didn't realize that it was actually supposed to be in 5-4. Five, in 5-4. Five, yeah, yeah we're, I'm like confused and shocked in the video because I'm playing the drum part, I'm playing to the click, and there's just these scratch guitars that are just hitting in all the wrong spots and all the wrong spots, and I'm like, what is going on here? Can we look at the grid? Can we look at the grid? That's because we're being lazy and not... And yeah, we didn't make a grid that switches time signatures we just right. set it and just make it go beep 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 yeah, beep beep <laughs> beep beep beep, yeah, beep, 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 beep right. with no <laughs> accent so it doesn't matter where right. the one is you can see me ignoring yeah. the scratch guitars playing straight to the click and it it sounds like such a mess there's a way to think about this song as it having like almost like a kaleidoscope of genres like you have that rush part in the beginning oh. then you have like you're saying like that swinging verse with the kind of retro fills mm -hmm. and then the chorus is more upbeat maybe indie rock upbeat but mm -hmm. then oh wait now we're back to the weird brush part oh wait now there's like this syncopated reggae ska part mm -hmm. like what is the genre of this song i don't think i ever intentionally did that i just thought it would be cool to be like oh here's a five four part and then this swings and then here's here's like this reggae halftime right. sort of feel. It goes back to what you were saying earlier where it sounds like you just cut and 
stuff stuff in there. So right. it's like, yeah, here's the like five four rush sounding part, and and here's your classic sort of like almost like Joe Jackson or like uh, Elvis Costello. Right, sort I always of like, thought it had kind of dun, yeah, right. Dun. But none of it was intentional. None of it makes sense. I mean, it, <laughs> I guess it makes sense, and like the singing's coherent. But yeah, when you listen to just the music, it's kind of chaotic. Well, let's take a look at those drums. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Here we go. So let's just punch the last. Uh, punch yeah, it. give me a little bit of the chorus and then. Well, no, start me right at the 5 4 part. So you lost the five. Yep.
close. I forgot where I was. Okay. Uh, that chorus felt good. That reggae part was way better that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So outro. Like started getting really late. Maybe I just counted wrong. This is me. I was just off. Okay. Same spot or different spot? You, you can get me a little closer now. No, that's the end of the song. That's just the scratch is messed up. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, I was like, what? No, song's over. Cool. Save. Done. So that was drums. Comment below if you think that part was actually ska. <laughs> okay. Ska, uh huh? <laughs> So head over to Spotify or listen here on YouTube to the final version of Cupboard Wars. If you want to stay connected, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell for notifications. Also, join our mailing list. There's a link in the description below. See you in the next video where we record bass.